told her that I had planned to see her afterwards, but Tina said that she wasn't leaving without us. And she didn't, and I didn't want to cause a big scene, so we left. The car ride to the hospice was quite odd. The whole time I was thinking, why would Tina come randomly get us? You know what I'm saying? But I didn't ask no questions. So nonetheless, I was just happy to see my mother because I haven't seen her in days, and I knew that she was ready to see me. Despite everything she was going through, and everything that I put her through, my mom always had a bright smile that electrified the room when I walked in. That smile brought me much joy. When I pulled up to the hospice, I got out the car, and Tina and Trent stayed back. My father was at the side door entrance. I was extremely puzzled. I was just ready to see my mother. First thing my father told me struck me like lightning. It wasn't, hey, I was school, or I'm glad you made it home safe. The usual greeting a father would give a son. Instead, he informed me that my mother had died. The woman who sacrificed so much for a child, you know what I'm saying, who wasn't supposed to be born, was gone. It wasn't until then that I discovered how powerful words could be. I didn't want to believe what my father just told me. I lost control of my body like a piece of me died. Tears instantly began to rush down my face. One sentence changed my life forever. That's an excerpt from my book. You know what I mean? And it's personal and it's near and dear. And it's like, man, I'm back where I was on February 27th, 2009. It started in this classroom from that phone call. You know what I'm saying? And um, I want to... I made sure that I came back to be here with y'all today. Um, like I was telling the last class, I could be anywhere in the world right now. I could be on my nine to five corporate job, you know what I'm saying? Doing Lord, who knows what, running in circles, doing nothing. Making good money, money don't mean nothing to me. Being here with y'all, it's a blessing. You know what I mean? Um, the odds were against me when I was here, a lot of people didn't think I was gonna go out and do the things I did. A lot of people never thought that they would see something like this from me. I hated literature. <coughs> I love Miss Cal. I love Miss Watson, but I didn't want. I, literature was boring. It was whack. You know what I mean? Who would have thought that I wrote a piece of literature? You know what I'm saying? And it's like in life. Life don't give anybody no exceptions. You know what I mean? The worst can happen to all of us. You know, I never thought that I would lose my mother. You know what I mean? I never thought that, but it happened. And my cousin, he had spoke earlier. He said that, you know, life is like a deck of cards. You gotta play the hands you dealt. You know what I'm saying? And if you look on this cover right here, let's break this down, this is concrete. You know what I mean? And your alarm clock, that's your purpose, what you're here for. Right now, y'all in school, y'all's trying to figure everything out. You gotta understand your purpose. You may not really truly understand it yet, but it's powerful. All of y'all got an alarm clock. And when that alarm clock rings, it can do the impossible. When you see a tree, you see it growing from soil. You don't see it coming out of concrete. So I'm telling you, if you're the worst kid in the class, and everybody telling you that you're not gonna be nothing, or you're not gonna accomplish anything, your alarm clock, when it go off, it's gonna shock the world and it's gonna wake them up. Everybody that slept on you, they gonna be like, wow, I never thought Jorge would go and do that. Really, Jorge, he own that? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm here to tell you that, Jorge, you can own that. And some. You know what I'm saying? Because one day, Jorge, you gonna have kids. You gonna have a family. You know what I'm saying? And so what you doing right now, you investing in their future. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's most important. Whatever you go out and do in life, whatever you want to do, you got to understand your purpose. Or else you're gonna be chasing the wind. Like if I would've, I had 
went to Columbus, Ohio when I graduated from Winston Salem State. And how I got to Winston was crazy. Like, this kid got to college. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody expected me to get to college, man. But after I graduated, I, um, I went to Ohio, and I was just lost, man. I lost my grandfather right before I graduated on top of, you know, me already not having a mother. I lost my homeboy. My homeboy got shot and killed, my roommate, from my freshman year. He was supposed to graduate with me. It's like, man, I had all that on my mind. And like, here I am in Nationwide doing internal audit. Anybody know what internal audit is? I don't either. <laughs> you, you know? Okay, you check yourself? Yeah, it's a check and balance system. But I didn't know that. I'm like, what is that? What did that got to do with anything, man? You know what I'm saying? So when I went up there, it was kind of like I was stubborn. I was kind of like that kid in your class when I was in corporate office. But it wasn't like that. I wasn't, I wasn't that deliberate. But it was just like I knew what it was. When I was there, I knew what I was, and I knew what I wanted to do. And it was like they was trying to get me to conform to their system. And I'm like, man, no, that's not who I'm called to be. I want to be myself, man. You know what I mean? I want to be right here in front of y'all. Like, for real. If I, like, man, I ain't got that much money right now. I could. But being here with y'all, I need more than money, man. Because I believe, I believe, I told, I was telling the last class, man, I've been up since 3 a.m. I live in Charlotte. I know, all the way to Charlotte. I was, up, I was out last night having a good time. But I was out to like 12 o'clock. I'm sorry, PG. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Woke up 3 o'clock, man, made sure I was here with y'all today. You know what I mean? I believe that. I believe in y'all, man. Like, I, I used to I used to think, like, you know what I mean? I would love to come back and talk to Miss Cal Miss Watson's class. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would love to be able to do that. And now I'm here, and that's just to show y'all, man, I can do whatever you want to do. Don't let nobody tell you differently. Believe in yourself. Because when you believe in yourself, can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody take, they could take, they could take your taxes, they could take that, they could take your freedom, you know, physically, but they can't take your belief. If you believe in yourself, can't nothing stop you. You know what I'm saying? This is a kid who lost his mother at 14 years old. I see people who lose their mother committing suicide, going crazy, lost, bitter, all that. And I was all that. I had all those thoughts. But I stayed strong because I believed in myself. Even when nobody else believed in me. You know what I mean? Like, I went to North Forsyth, had a .5 GPA, man. Point, a what? A point .5 GPA. A L. A point .5. Is that even possible? I think I made it possible. You know what I'm saying? I had a point .5, man. When I graduated, when I graduated from Reagan, I switched schools to get out of, you know what I'm saying, to change my life around. So I thought, you know what I mean? I, when, I, when I applied to colleges, I got denied by every single last one. They seen that GPA? And by that time, it was like, it got it up to like past the two because I, I got myself together and, you know, I got in the books and I was like, okay, I want to go to college because everybody else was talking about college. <laughs> you know, we was being PG, so... Uh, you know, I was like, okay, I want to get there, too. I want to do that, too. You know what I mean? Every school that I applied to denied me, man. Mm -hmm. I applied to, like, UNC Wilmington, ECU, all of them denied me. That's why I laughed when I was like, I got a college degree. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody, like, the odds was against me for real. Once the Salem State gave me a small little opportunity. But the Bible say you, if you had a faith the size of a mustard seed, it can move mountains. It can move mountains. You know what I mean? When I got to Winston, I wasn't like everybody else. Everybody else, you know what I'm saying? They got in, they got accepted, they had scholarships, they all, I ain't got nothing. I just had a lady said she was gonna help me out. She believed in me and said, I'm gonna let you into college. You know what I mean? My GPA requirement was here. I mean, the GPA requirement was here, mine was down here. SAT scores was up here, mine was all the way down here. So I was like, I had a chip on my shoulder. You know what I mean? So I had to go hard. Just go hard or go home. For real. You know what I mean? Ain't no telling where I would have been at if they didn't give me no opportunity, man. You know what I'm saying? I see some of the people I grew up with. I see where they at right now in their life. You know what I mean? 
I would have been right there with him. And the crazy thing is, like, at that time, I was telling him, like, yo, bro, on, bro, leave, leave that alone. But some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Like, don't, ain't nothing good in that, man. It's more than life. I understood it then. I got out. But I was telling them, yo, don't do that. You know what I mean? And if y'all ever get exposed to that life, don't mess with it. It ain't nothing good in that. I don't care. If you got to make a way, it's going to be a way that you can make a way. But that's not the way. That's what they want you to do. They want you to fall to the system. Don't fall to that system, man. Stay strong. Stay strong, man. I've been without... I could have easily turned to the streets, easily. But I'd rather be broke and do that. I don't want to throw my life away, man. You know what I'm saying? The world is yours. Literally, it's yours. Everything that's in it. Before you was born, it was destined for you to have everything that was in this world. And I'm a product of it. And I'm going to take advantage of everything. You know what I mean? So, uh... I ain't going I know y'all, we ain't got much time. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I do poetry. I speak poetry, all that. Um, it's this one poem that I uh, have. It's, this one is called The Greed and Unemployed. And for, I know this is literature, so we're going to talk some words, and I'm going to speak some literature. You know what I'm saying? So this one called The Greed and Unemployed, and what it is talking about is like, you know, in Winston, I'm born and raised in Winston, you know what I mean? You go and get a college degree, that's huge, man. You know what I mean? Like, nobody, you don't see too many people getting college degrees, man. So, that's all I really wanted. And then I got to college, got my college degree, and then after college, now what? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm degreed and unemployed. I had a girl tell me when I was at Nationwide, she was on a high horse, she had pride and everything like that. She was like, you know you degreed and unemployed, right? that. So, here's that poem. I'm going to keep it PG too. So, the greed and unemployed is trying to make it by. When being the greed was all that I was seeking to be. Told that that was the way to go. I went, but where did it get me? Back on low. Free just ain't got no dough. Listen to me. Figured I sell dope. So I dropped that knowledge. <laughs> Crack rocks, make your brain pop. Reaganomics, slavery is economics. Jail not making bail, chain gang, we still slaves, I'm crazy. Hillary for president. She was, I can't say this, I can't, I, I, she for the super predators. Keep them from becoming competitors. I got out, it's lonely, no warm meals. I don't even know how I'm gonna pay my bills. <laughs> the greed and unemployed, I wanna be my own boss. But that come with a cost. You gonna have to die some meals to reach a bill. I'm not lost, I'm isolated like AI. Levels to the game, I'm just trying to survive. IPO, I'm new to the market, no perspectives. I keep them guessing. Writing like a Harlem native, they don't even know I'm poetic. I'm like Mike on the beat, Curry on the court, I'm gonna sweep you off your feet. I'm like leaves on the cocaine tree. These from my fiends smuggle the truth until they criminalize me. The greed for the greed, y'all not hear me. So that's a deep poem, and I had to cut a lot out, because I was, it's a lot of stuff that I talk about. But what I'm talking about, like with that poem, I say dope, you know what I'm saying? Selling dope. This is dope. You know what I'm saying? Same way that a crack rock would spark your brain, this is spark your brain. You know what I'm saying? I, I could have turned to the streets, but I decided to sell dope. And guess what? I'm doing it unemployed. So, guess what? All y'all, y'all the future, man. Y'all the future. You know what I mean? And I, and I really want y'all to understand what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because when I was here, they, they didn't have a Daryl Q. Slade to come back and, and talk to us. You know what I mean? This is something valuable. You know what I mean? This is valuable, man. Take advantage. Like, listen to her. She's not going to lead you down the wrong path. She's staying true to her purpose. I think she just here today, to, I mean, here every day just to discipline y'all and to make y'all feel worse than what y'all know, man. Listen to what she's your captain. You gotta trust her. You know what I mean? It's like when you in the dark and you don't know what's going on, she's that person that's in charge to get y'all through to the light. 
Take advantage of every second in this classroom, man. It ain't, it's no excuse. Don't be that kid that was being, you know, stubborn like me. Don't do that, man. Don't do it. You know what I mean? Because the, the future is bright, man. And even if you do get in trouble, understand why. And confront your problems. You know what I mean? It's okay. We mess up. We have a lot of slip-ups in life. But what you do? Fall down seven times, you get up eight. It's no excuse, man. But what I'm going to tell you, if this was the real world, and you get in trouble, it ain't no turning around. You know what I mean? I know people now that's doing life sentences. You know what I mean? That went to this school. I'm just being real. It, it ain't no ISS in the real world. You know what I mean? It's 20 years to life. Was he in your class? What's that to me? Yeah, I knew the kid. Grew up to him. We grew up together. Good kid. He was a good kid, man. Now he don't have no life. The decision is yours. And I'm not, the, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that to show y'all, man. It's, it's you can't. It's, it's, the world is not, it's this, the, the world that we are here is not set up for us. But that don't mean that you can't make it. Stay true to who you are. Stay true to your purpose and believe in yourself. And I promise you, you're going to have a tree spread out that, spread out that concrete. It's the tree of knowledge. Light. That's light. Y'all going to be a beacon of light to the next generation. So soak in everything I'm telling y'all, man. For real, for real. I wouldn't have drove no 60 miles this morning to just tell y'all some crazy stuff. You know you know what I mean? I love y'all, man. For real. So, I read the book. It's a good sure. read. It's an easy read. It's a very good book. So, what I'm doing is, I want to do a book 